I believe that George Grant meant well and really intended to help people and to increase agriculture in America. He probably was a kind of person that liked to plan, liked to see things from start to finish, and I really believe that he meant well and thought that he could make a difference in the lives of these Englishmen. When you headed out to the Plains area, at the end of the Civil War, the federal government owned all the land and they wanted the railroads to go through and connect the East Coast to the West Coast. So they gave the railroads every other section in every county that they went through. And George Grant came out looking for a place to set up this uh, English colony and school. And uh, when he was coming through on the train, it was on the spring day and it would have been a wet spring and the grass was tall and the wildflowers were blooming and it was sun was shining and it was beautiful. And he thought this looked like a good place to raise crop and cattle. And uh, he made a deal in 1872 with the railroad and he bought 69,000 acres at 80 cents an acre. He turned around and resold it to uh, English and Scottish gentlemen for two to four dollars an acre. Well, the prairie would have been just wide open country. There wouldn't have been uh, fences at that time. They built the fences, fence posts out of stone just like they did their homes. It was all quarried locally. And uh, as far as the eye could see, would be open country. Victoria Colony was unique because it would have been the first uh, civilized settlement in Ellis County. Uh, Hayes was there because of Fort Hayes. They put the fort in to protect the railroad workers. So the population of Hayes still consisted mainly of railroad workers, soldiers, uh, mule skinners, buffalo hunters, gamblers. George Grant was going to bring civility to the plains. Well, he was, was serious about wanting to set up these estates and have them be uh, self-sustaining, productive, uh, produce income and he was very interested in animal husbandry and getting the best sheep, the best cattle, and having them bred and multiply. In uh, 1875, uh, he wrote a letter stating that uh, most of his cattle had overwintered really well, and despite the fact that the first year Fires, prairie fires took their crops, and the second year the grasshopper ate all their crops. He still believed that this was good productive land and would yield well to agriculture. So he sincerely believed in uh, raising cattle uh, and sheep and breeding them to bring out the best qualities. When George Grant died five years after coming here in 1878, uh, the English colony just started dispersing. He left some of the money to different individuals. His niece had come from Scotland to run his home for him, and he left the majority of his estate to her. Uh, it's believed that by the time the bills were paid off that she wasn't left with uh, much money to speak of, and she also moved on. And shortly after he died, the St. George Church that he had built uh, was torn down and the stone went into two other churches in Ellis County. I think it's kind of a, an interesting and an enjoyable story of somebody who had this kind of vision, even though he didn't live long enough to make it all work. Uh, he had a vision of what a perfect colony could be. And when you take somebody that has a vision 
and goes about making that vision happen or trying to make that vision happen, they're usually a pretty uh, intelligent, resourceful individual. He's known for bringing the Black Angus cattle to America. Uh, no small feat. It, it's something that we should all be proud of, I think. He was far-sighted from that point of view.